This is an Aston Martin Vantage Roadster, and it's the quickest car in the world. No, 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 not like that. Like this. It's fully convertible roof is able to raise or lower in less than seven seconds. And not only is that faster than an Aston Martin DB5 could get from 0 to 62, it's also quicker than any other fully automatic convertible currently on sale. And that's very handy when you live in the UK and the weather is, well, shall we say, changeable. As party tricks go, it's not just neat, but also incredibly useful, and it's sure to be a prime talking point for your friendly Aston Martin sales exec. But what I want to know is, can the rest of the car deliver? Or is it like one of those freestyle footballers that can do a hundred keepy-uppies in less than a minute, but could never hack it in centre mid for Peterborough United? could argue that because the Vantage Coupe drove and handled so brilliantly, this drop-top version has the perfect platform to work from. In fact, we twin-tested a Vantage Coupe with a Carrera GTS back in 2018 and found that in the driving department, there wasn't much to choose between them. You see, had the Coupe have been a big, soft, squishy, old school Aston Martin, then that would have actually been perfect for the convertible because you wouldn't have had to have worried what would happen when you take the roof off and whether it's going to go all floppy. But as it is, because the coupe is so brilliant to drive, anything less than that is going to be, well, a bit of a disappointment. And let's not forget, Aston can't rely on a super rigid carbon tub to keep things stiff when you take the roof off. Thankfully then, and largely due to the roof being fabric rather than metal, the curb weight has only increased by 60 kilograms. Although it still comes in at over 1.6 tonnes because, well, the coupe wasn't exactly light in the first place. You've got to also factor in a balance shift rearwards, as while the coupe was 49.51 front to back, the Roadster comes out at 48.52. So, to stop the Roadster from being a crushing disappointment, Aston Martin has made some changes to the coupe setup. And that includes changing the map on the adaptive dampers, stiffening the dampers up at the back, tweaking the ESP, and also fettling the steering just a little bit. And the result is, well, good, actually. Very good. You really do have to be concentrating to notice the difference between this and the coupe. I mean, stick the dampers in Sport or Sport Plus, that's the settings best suited to the road. And it's so easy to get into a rhythm with this thing. Like the coupe, it manages to tame that big AMG V8 up front and allows you to dissect a decent road like you're in something far smaller and a lot lighter. I mean, it might not have that last bit of sharpness of a 911 Cabriolet, but it runs it pretty damn close. And actually talking of the 911, its steering is one of its best bits. And the Vantage reminds me of that because the rack isn't hyperactive or crazy just off center. It's actually very, very well proportioned and it turns just as much as you want it to when you're putting your inputs in. And actually staying with that 911 comparison, I reckon this thing has got a better ride quality and it's also got less tyre noise as well. I mean, it may be an out and out sports car this, but it's learnt a thing or two from its grand tour of big brothers. There's more too. Part of how endearing the Vantage Roadster is to drive is down to something that you don't even have to be moving to appreciate. Okay, so the interior isn't perfect. Not everyone will like how it's been completely peppered in buttons or how you can barely reach the cubby behind you when you're on the move or how the infotainment system is off an old Mercedes and that it doesn't have Apple CarPlay. I mean, you could honestly get a 20 grand 
second-hand A-Class and it would have a more up-to-date infotainment system than this £126,000 Aston Martin. But at the end of the day, this is still a sports car and one of the things that the Vantage Roadster does very well indeed is its driving position. With the seat in its lowest setting, I feel like I'm basically sitting on the road and that I could open the door and just touch the tarmac underneath me. The steering wheel as well, it comes out nice and close to you or much further away, there's endless amounts of adjustment. And I just love how you've got the buttons on the wheel for the dampers and for the powertrain and you can adjust them individually with your thumbs as you're driving along. There's none of the driving modes that have everything set for you. This is ideal and it's the small things that really make a difference. What's not so small is the commemorative Vane grille option. It's been added to the range in order to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the Vantage nameplate and there's no doubt that it brings extra elegance to a vast front end housing the AMG source twin turbo V8. This is a car that just looks like it'll be loud, although maybe not quite as loud as you think. Now you see, the first press drives of this car last year were done on American spec Vantage Roadsters because the launch was supposed to be in California but it got cancelled because of Covid. And when I drove an American spec Vantage Roadster, I thought, wow, this is one of the greatest sounding cars I've ever heard. But then I'd forgotten that US cars don't have to have a gasoline particulate filter and also their noise regulations aren't quite the same as they are in the UK. So while this UK version sounds brilliant, actually, I mean, it really does, it's got a lovely characterful exhaust and a fabulous growl to it, it's not as loud, and it really is just the volume, it's not as loud as what our American cousins will get. So if that matters to you, then may I recommend an aftermarket exhaust because this thing can be a hell of a lot louder, believe it or not. One thing I don't have any complaints about, however, is the power. 503 brake horsepower, 505 pounds foot of torque, and that means 0 to 62 miles an hour in 3.8 seconds and a top speed of 190 miles an hour. Ooh. I mean, this is effortless performance. You don't need to be in the power band if there is one, and you don't need to be in the right gear. All you need to do is flex your right foot forwards and go, and go some more. Ooh. Wow. This is the same M177 twin turbocharged 4 litre V8 as AMG uses in its CE GT four door models, to name but a few. And it actually doesn't feel all that much different to how it does in those cars, but I mean, that's not a bad thing, not by a long way. It's got all the performance and effortless grunt you could ever need in a car like this. I mean, again, if you want the last word in sharpness, then Porsche's flat six and eight speed PDK box will do it better. But this engine, this powertrain has got such a sense of occasion to it. And that's surely what you want. It's AMG and Aston Martin working in perfect harmony. I think there's a joke there to be made about Racing Point's 2020 Formula One car, but I won't go there. Probably better not. So, should you buy a Vantage Roadster at £126,000? Well, it's hard to remember a time when Aston Martin wasn't going through some kind of struggle or transition period and now is no different. There's a new CEO, there's electric models due from 2025, and they've just launched their first ever SUV. So you might worry that traditional sports cars like the Vantage Roadster would be an afterthought. Well, I tell you what, I wish 
my afterthoughts looked and drove and sounded like this. I mean, the recipe is not complicated. Big V8 engine up front, rear wheel drive, an open top when the weather's good, and the fastest roof in the world for when it's not. Yeah, that's my kind of afterthought. <laughs>